Hello, this is Toph from Travel Focal Production with another, another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can model, um, do modeling in Blender a lot faster and a lot easier with a an add-on called Loop Tools. It's already in Blender. Let me pull up, I've already opened up Blender, so I'm just going to pull it on up. It'll, it saves time as opposed to trying to wait for it to open up as I do the tutorial. But um, in order to find out or in, and install the add-on, because it's in 2.79, I think, I think it's in every version of Blender from what I can remember up to this version. So it works in 2.79, 2.78, and so on and so forth. So go to Edit for 2.8, is what I'm using now, 2.82. Go to Preferences. And then you're going to type in the search bar the word loop. And it's right there. So it'll put a check in the checkbox, and it's activated. It's the same process in, in the other version of Blender. Go to user preferences uh, in the search bar, type in loop, and it'll pop up and activate it by clicking the checkbox. And then in order to find out where it is, just go to your sidebar, click on that. And you still don't really see it. You see tools, but you don't really see it. Loop tools only works in edit mode. It doesn't work in object mode. So in order to actually see it on the side panel, you go into edit mode by pressing tab on your keyboard. And then edit, and there it is, loop tools. Those are all the tools. Now the ones I usually use are the ones I usually find helpful are, are uh, the uh, circle and the bridge. The other ones also serve quite an important purpose also, but for what I use it for is always circle and bridge. I always use it for when it comes to uh, modeling and blender. And for this to actually work, you have to actually have a subdivided mesh. So on your keyboard, press W. Get a subdivide from the pop-up menu. We're going to expand that. Let's subdivide it 10 times. So let's press 1 and 0 on our keyboard and press Enter to accept those changes. Let's minimize that and then we have this. So let's go into the top view by pressing 7 on our keyboard, top view. Press A to deselect everything. Press C for circle select. And to increase the <coughs> excuse me, to increase the influence of our selection, scroll down on your mouse wheel. We want to try to center this so it gets all of our circles in the middle. Just click once. And then scroll up to minimize it because we want to collect get all these squares on the side, make a, a complete circle. Let's click on that. Oh, let's go into face mode first, sorry about that. Left click to deactivate that. And to go up to the top of your user interface and click on the face select. And press C again on your keyboard. And then just click, left click in these areas so you get a circle. So we're going to go by 5 by 5, so this is 5 at the top. And we want 5 on the side, so let's click down here. And we have our circle, left click to, or right click to deactivate your selection tool. And then from there we're going to press circle. And there it is, it creates a circle for us. And we're going to, let me see, press E to extrude it once. E on your keyboard and press enter. Now we're going to go to our move gizmo to the left side of our user interface and left click right there. And we're going to press 1 going to front view. And we're going to click and drag on the z-axis to deepen that circle that we just made. And there's our circle. It looks kind of rough. So we're going to go into object mode by pressing tab, exiting out of edit mode, press tab on your keyboard. And we're going to press W. And we're going to shade smooth. And it still looks rough. So we're going to do something else. We're going to go and add a uh, subdivision surface to it. Click on your that icon there of the wrench. And click on the Add Modifier from the drop-down menu. Click Subdivide Surface. And then we're going to, in the viewport uh, selection, click up once. And it looks a lot better. Now with this, I used to actually use the bevel tool. Was it the bevel? Or the, is it Boolean? Let me... Look into the metal file, see which ones I actually use. Yeah, bo Boolean. Or I don't know if it's called Boolean or Boolean, but this is what I use to actually cut circles 
uh, or holes inside of flat meshes, and it never really turned out too good. Plus, it's kind of cumbersome to some extent because there's a lot of you know choices that you have to choose, cut into this, cut in, into that. But with this method, using the loop tools, you just you know subdivide it, choose uh, where you want your circle to be by clicking on those parts of the mesh that have been subdivided and then press circle and then there you go and that's it and the other tool I use is the bridge tool and it's pretty helpful also so I'm going to go one click on one on my keyboard and I'm going to click on the move gizmo left click on that and left click on drag on the z-axis to raise this above you don't have to do this but I just left I do this before just for consistency I want it above the x-axis there so it can be above the, the line there I'm going to hold down shift, hold down my middle mouse button and pull this over. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to press A and press A again to select everything. And then press shift D and left click to accept that uh, change. Left click and drag on the X axis to separate this. In order for the bridge tool to work, it has to be the same mesh. If I were to just not have these as the same mesh and I tried to use a bridge tool, it wouldn't work. So this has to be the same mesh. It has to be the exact same mesh or part of the same mesh in order for the bridge tool to work. Now I'm going to rotate this so that these two holes are facing each other. So press 1 again. I'm going to rotate it. Well, you can just... Uh, press R, hold down control, and then move your mouse so that it rotates in the direction you want it to go in. Uh, left click on this cube, press A twice. Oh, sorry about that. Left click and press control L. That's how you can select uh, all parts of the mesh without having to select them individually. So once you've selected one part of the uh, mesh, Press Control L on your keyboard, and it, con it uh, selects the whole mesh. Press R on keyboard again, and then we're going to press Control to, ro to rotate it in increments. And rotate it to the face of the other cube. Now they face each other. Another trick I like to use in order to... I've, I've done this before, uh, because sometimes when you want to select just a part of a mesh, it's kind of hard, especially when it looks like this. So what I do is this. Press A to deselect everything. Hold down Alt on your keyboard and left click. Let's go into edge select mode first. Sorry about that. Press A to deselect everything. Then hold down Alt on your keyboard and left click. And want it to, we want it to select this whole set of vertices. Let me see. Let me try this again. Let's go into the x-ray mo mode so we can see inside. Hold on Alt again, left click. I guess the way it divided this, it divided it in, in segments when it made the circle, which is still fine, that's still fine. But just hold down Shift and Alt and left click again. We wanted just like this whole interior part of the uh, vertices. To pivot around your scene, hold down your middle mouse button and just move your mouse around. Hold down shift again, hold down alt, left click, shift again, alt, left click. And now I've selected all these um, edges here. The next thing you want to do is go, go to control E. And we want to go to mark seam from the pop up menu. Let's click on that. And now this whole section has been pretty much um, somewhat separated from the rest of the mesh. and. What I mean by that, let me do the other side also. So we're going to press A to deselect all that. So let's turn around with our, let's zoom out with our mouse wheel and pivot around by holding down the middle mouse button. Hold down Shift and hold down your middle mouse button to drag it across. Then pivot again with the middle mouse button. And we're going to zoom in by scrolling up. And we want to select all these vertices, all these edges again like we did with the uh, first cube. So hold down Alt and left click hold down shift and alt left click left click and left click control e once again and then mark seam and then press a to just like that selection 
And now what we're going to do is that we're going to go to face select and we're going to turn off the x-ray because we don't want to select anything behind uh, behind this circle that we just uh, cut out basically. So this deactivate that and then once you press inside of this uh, just choose this part of your mesh left click on that and then control L and that just selects the inside of where your uh, seams were and that's what I usually do to make selecting parts of my uh, mesh a lot easier let's pivot around with our middle mouse button hold down shift and then we're going to drag, hold down the middle, middle mouse button and we're going to drag it across hold down shift or middle mouse button again and pit and we're going to press uh, let me see we're going to press C again for circle selection left click once uh, right click deactivate uh, that selection and press control L and now we have this part of this circle um, selected and this part and then when you press bridge it's going to connect these two together with a set of meshes you can change you can have you have some uh, parts uh, some choices you can make with how you want the bridge to look in terms of like the segments and so on and so forth uh, but I usually just leave it as it is and then when you press bridge there you go it's connected these two together so I mean it's it's helpful this is a pretty helpful add-on uh, loop the loop tools and each of these perform different functions some of them are self-explanatory like relax it relaxes your mesh um, flatten that flattens out curves or bumps on your mesh things like that so yeah this is uh, today's Blender Quick Tip. If you wanted to actually add more segments to this bridge, let's press Ctrl Z to get out of that to go backwards. Just increase your segments. Let's bump this up to, let's say 10, press bridge again, and it's added more. And you can actually twist it if you wanted to. I don't know, maybe you want to make a, the threads of a screw, you could probably do that with this. Let's press Ctrl Z to activate that again. And we're going to increase the amount of twists we can add to it. Bump it up to two. Press bridge again, and you can see it's been twisted. So yeah, it's a pretty helpful add-on. It does do it does do a lot of things that are helpful. It doesn't do everything pretty much, but it it gets the job done when you need it done. So yeah. So as a beginner, this will help you improve your modeling techniques in Blender. So yeah. So that's today's Blender quick tip, and I hope it was helpful because it helped me a lot. I hope it was helpful to whoever, to all of you who are watching. And uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for the subscriptions, uh, people who have up, who have subscribed, and people who will still subscribe in the future. Really appreciate you guys, and thank you very much. I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.